Hello all, Jonathan Raspberry here for our second video in the in-game laboratory series. Um, first game that we had in that series was learning how to win a uh, king and pawn versus king in game, or draw it if you're the, the king against the king and pawn. Today we're going to be looking at something that is, I would say, just as simple, um, at least once it's gotten to this position that you see here on the board. Um, you're going to learn how to win these in games as white. And then you'll also learn when winning is impossible. I'm going to show you a couple of other um, scenarios where you cannot win. Uh, but most often, I can tell you, you will win. Uh, because first off, either your opponent will not know how to defend his best, or you will be able to win by force. All right, And this is a case where you can simply win by force. Uh, this is uh, a what you would call uh, queen versus pawn on the seventh, and uh, in this case here, white is going to play queen c8 uh, and then e2. But um, for a written version, a uh, if you want to read how to do this, um, go to chess.com. Check out the Raspberry Chess Group over there. Um, I had said on a previous video that uh, I was leading the student in his game. That has recently changed. I'm now um, operating from Raspberry Chess. So if you want to see this, uh, Queen versus Pawn on the 7th, just check out Raspberry Chess and uh, click on the forums over there, and you'll find this one. Um, so uh, White has to stop Black from pushing his pawn. If he pushes the pawn, it's a theoretical draw, unless the king is, say, over here on d3, and the queen can get to a5 check. The king's never going to come over here. Black is just going to keep his king real close to the pawn, and then he'll push it, and you won't have any checks, or, uh, or I mean, you'll have checks, but you won't have any, like, skewers that'll win any material, uh, obviously no pins. Uh, so... Uh, in this case, you have got to check him. Um, you can also pin him if you want, um, but I'll discuss that a little bit later. Um, if you don't check him or pin him, he will simply push his pawn, and the game is drawn. So check him. He's going to play his king over to g1. Uh, if king to e1, which is what we're trying to get him to do, Black is just going to play king c5, and he's, he's getting his king a little bit closer, and that's the key. The key is to get the king right up next to the pawn, and then to take the pawn with the queen. But, Black being a smart player, will play, after queen f5, he'll play king g1. Alright, so now he's starting to queen again. Uh, queen e4, stopping the pawn, getting a little bit closer. The goal square you want to get to is either f3, or d3, depending on which side the king is on. So I'm going to go queen e4 check. He's going to go king f2, not letting me get to that f3 square with check. Queen f4, king g1, queen e3 check. I'm getting closer. King f1, the only square to defend the pawn, then queen f3 check. Now the point is, I am checking the king and I'm threatening the pawn, forcing him to play king e1, the only viable defense. So now I'm going to just go ahead and bring the king down. I'm going to play king c5. I'm getting closer. Uh, he's now going to not play king d1 because if you notice that pawn is still pinned, I can bring my king one step closer. Uh, however, he is going to play king d2. And now as I said, you could also pin the pawn instead of checking the king. Checking the king here is a viable option as well with queen d d5, but after queen f2 check, or sorry, pinning the pawn, um, black has now got to get out of the way, defending that pawn. Uh, now the pawn's threatening to queen again, so you check him. You get the pattern here, I think. Check here. I can, I can actually check him here. Um, and then, of course, playing king b1, the queen's going to get to the square, so he's got to go back. You're going to play queen 2 d3 check now, you've gotten to that square, and now the king's going to come over. I'll bring my king down, one more square, he'll play here. I will pin, check, stop the pawn, 
do both and I'll play here. Now you want to be careful uh, if your king was over here on c2 so he was coming from uh, a4 then he went to b3 and, and he wanted to go to c2 you'd be actually stalemating black so make sure you don't stalemate him with king d3 and after king d1 uh, you've got made in like two now and that's all she wrote checkmate okay so the point was you pinned the pawn or you checked the king uh, forced the king to move then stopped the pawn from queening or checked the king again or both then you basically got to either the f3 or d3 squares we'll go back so you can see what's going on here um, a little bit farther back here with queen e4 checked got to that square forcing the king to make the unlovable decision of king e1 allowing that king in and then you pin the pawn check the king stop the pawn from queening and uh, then you got your king close enough and won the pawn. That's how you're going to win these endgames. Now, um, what happens, oh, by the way, this is true for any pawn on the B file, either on B7 for, for white or B2 for black. Uh, D2, E2, and B2. Uh, actually, that would be G file right there. I might have said B. Uh, so you've, you've got, um, wait, yeah, I'm not looking at this board upside down. Uh, you've got um, the B files, the D file, the E file, and the G file are all are winning um, by force, if you know what you're doing. But if it's an A pawn, or an H pawn, as you might guess, let me, let me update this real quickly. Uh, you might see a flash here. Let me, uh, let me update the position. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Um, so uh, with the uh, C pawn, actually, I decided uh, to go ahead and show you this real quickly. Um, with the C pawn or F pawn, which in this case is the F pawn here, Black has got a very nice defense, uh, which you might have seen if you were watching uh, the D pawn and noticed that king was awfully close to the corner. When black plays queen g3 check, um, we would hope that black would play king to c1 and we could push king forward. However, black just plays king a1 and you can't make any progress. There is no way that you can win this position as, as white unless black just messes up horribly. Um, so with the c pawn or the f pawn, the game is a draw if the king is too far away. Now, obviously, if the king is like uh, up here on f3 or b4, then, then it might be a little bit different since you can uh, create some mate threats. Um, but sorry, I wanted to show you this position first with the, with the c pawn, the little trick here for the c and f pawns. Um, and so it's pretty obvious here as to why uh, c and f pawns are drawn. If you take this pawn, you will get stalemate so um going back here checking out the uh, a pawn and the h pawn let me up refresh the board real quick okay we got it now um with the a pawn the uh you start with the checks um he's not going to walk in front of his pawn obviously i'm going to get closer he doesn't want to ever give up control of the uh, or he doesn't want to ever step onto h1 black's going to now play um, by, um, sorry black's going to play here if he wants to if he doesn't want to step into that, in front of that pawn which he can and then you get to this position and um, yeah um, it's drawn as well because now you're threatening stalemate. All right, you're threatening stalemate. That's kind of weird. Uh, if you move the king, then it's stalemate. Um, and so you have to move your queen again. There's no way to force the king in front of the the h pawn 
while the queen is not on the uh, G file. So here this king over here is trapped. Uh, and then with king to c5, you get stalemate again. Okay, so those are two examples right there with the c pawn and the a pawn. Or sorry, the f pawn and the... Uh, golly, I think this board is upside down. You've got the got the f and the h uh, two pawns. And um, you've got two cases of a draw. So remember with the uh, b, d, e, and g files, you have winning... Uh, chances because or I, I mean you're you're forced you're, you can win by force because of the forcing the king in front of the pawn if he wants to defend it um uh, which case you can bring your king closer with the c pawn as we saw you um or f pawn golly man uh with the f pawn the king can stand in the corner and when you take that f pawn or take that c pawn um you're giving up stalemate and with the king in the corner, you can't make progress because if you try to advance your king, the game is drawn because the king can't make any legal moves. So in this case, it's not the capturing of the pawn that results in the draw. It's actually the um, the doing exactly what your opponent or what you want your opponent to do. That's that's what's drawn. Um, here, you force the king in front of the pawn. You're happy about that. As soon as you touch your king, the game is a draw. So very interesting. Um, take this into account um, as far as trying to win positions. Uh, for those of you who are stronger um, and who can who can like calculate farther ahead than uh, than some of the beginners who might be watching this, uh, y'all guys need to take this into account when you are calculating whether or not to enter a pawn race. Um, so for instance, say you're in a position where uh, you are interested in trading off a pair of pawns and if you trade them off then you're both left with a pawn you see that you're going to queen first uh, and then he's going to push his pawn threaten to queen but his queen is on the c file or he, it will be on the c file uh, and so black will push this pawn you know though that if you go into this line black is drawn when that pawn gets to the second rank so you know either a I should go for this line if I'm worse or b if I'm better then I want to avoid this line unless the game is already drawn uh, and then of course if you're winning you can say alright let's let's maybe if, if if I have a queen and my opponent has a rook and I know I can go into a position like we saw the first position um, then then sacrifice the queen for the rook and when you do that, you have a winning king upon endgame. Just just make sure you're right. Uh, so that's how you can use this if you're a stronger player. Uh, for those of you a little bit lower rated, make sure you go over this a couple of times. Make sure you know exactly how to replicate these moves. You need to know when it's drawn. You don't need to you don't need to demonstrate that um, to yourself at least to begin with. You need to say, okay, if, if this is an eight pawn, it's drawn. I know that um, B pawn. I know it's winning. C pawn. I know it's drawn. So on. And then once you once you've got that down, then you just go through the motions, uh, checking the king, pinning the pawn, and then uh, forcing the king in front of the pawn if you're winning. So there you go, guys. That is our second installment of the in-game laboratory. Next time we will continue on, get a little bit more complicated. Uh, these in-game laboratories will not necessarily be sequential in the increasing uh, difficulty level, um, but you can search for a video that is slightly more advanced if you would like um, just by going to Raspberry Chess and looking at the third installment, which will be coming up very shortly. Uh, or the fourth installment, fifth installment, seventh one is the next one in the line of difficulty. Um, so thank you for watching. Uh, I'm trying to get better at this. I've just begun, as you can tell. I'm not exactly the best uh, speaker, per se, in these videos, but um, I'm getting better. And um, so thank you guys for watching, and I look forward to producing another video soon. Thank you.